Hey everybody, what's up? It's Jared here from One Up Creative. So, I recently bought the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, still a ridiculous name. One of the things I wanted to know when I bought this camera was basically, you know, with the media that I had, you know, how high of a frame rate or how high of a quality could I record? Because this thing goes all the way up to raw lossless. And you know, recording on raw lossless isn't something that just like your SD card is able to do. So I wanted to figure out, you know, what I was actually able to record on. So I did some recording tests on the Lexar 633 times, which runs at about 90 megabytes per second speeds. And I also did some tests on the Samsung T5 portable SSD, since that's a really popular choice to run on this rig. So the way I ran my testing methodology was pretty simple. Basically what I did was I just would start recording in a certain quality and frame rate. And then I would just check to see uh, how long that could record. I would usually go up to a minute because I figured if it was able to make a minute, then that was a good enough uh, test segment to ensure that it would be able to record for longer periods of time. So I'm just gonna share my results of what qualities we're gonna be able to share here. One thing to note is that I am not gonna be sharing QHD qualities because they're going to be mostly identical to DCI 4K uh, qualities because they're so close in resolution. So we're going to just be doing DCI 4K in HD. Okay, so we're going to start with our Samsung T5 SSD. This is what I was able to record reliably on the Samsung T5 SSD. I was able to get raw uncompressed on the Samsung T5 at 24 FPS. However, at 60 FPS, I was dropping frames, so I don't think you can reliably record 60 FPS on the Samsung T5. However, if you step that down to three to one compression, you are able to get the 60 FPS, absolutely no problem. And most people are reporting that three to one compression on this camera is actually almost indistinguishable from the uncompressed, so uh, you might as well shoot the three to one anyway. As far as ProRes qualities go, you are able to shoot ProRes HQ in 24 frames per second, but you're not able to actually get 60 FPS out of the HQ. You're gonna have to step down to 422 for that. And then as far as HD goes, you're basically gonna get as good as it gets. You're gonna get 120 frames per second in HD, which is pretty great. Uh, that means recording 24 frames per second in HD is going to be absolutely no problem. So you're able to get the max quality uncompressed raw in HD at 120p. Alright, moving on to the SD card, which is the more interesting one because it's a much lower bandwidth. And this is the one that I think is a more interesting thing. Again, this records at about 90 megabytes per second. I think that's the read speed. I don't know what the write speed is, but you're able to look up those specs. Actually, you know what? I'll just put them right here. And this is in a DCI 4K. You're able to record ProRes LT at 24 frames per second. You're not able to do any of the RAWs in the SD card. Uh, it's just not able to handle that. But if you want to step it up to 60p, you're going to have to go to ProRes Proxy, uh, which I think is still very impressive that you're even able to get ProRes Proxy out of the SD card because it's kind of astounding that the SD card has enough bandwidth to hand, handle that. And the quality in a ProRes proxy is still astounding. I have a video link down below where I was testing that, so if you want to check it out, please do. All right, stepping down to HD, which is probably what most of you are going to be shooting on an SD card, you can shoot raw lossless in 24p in HD, which is great. Uh, if you wanted to shoot raw lossless, that's probably the best way to go about doing it on an SD card. But if you want to get uh, 60p, you got to step it up to the 3 to 1 compression. But that is the results from my tests, guys. Uh, if you guys have more questions, please leave them down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, I am open to comments. Please leave a comment. If you think my te testing methodology was wrong, that's perfectly fine. Let me know what you think I could have done better uh, so that other people know down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more videos like this one. I hope to see you soon. Peace.